Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. So it is November 1st, November 3rd. It's the beginning of November. So you may not have seen a garden tour for the last two months because I've been out of the country. So mom and I left on a cruise the middle of September. We didn't get back till the end of October, which means the garden has been left to its own devices uh, for, for almost two whole months. Now, I did quite a bit of maintenance before I left. My best friend was here for a week. You saw those videos. She helped me plant these mums, and we did quite a bit of garden maintenance to just get everything ready, but the garden has still been left alone for almost two months, and while I've done quite a bit um, in the last week, planting pansies, planting cabbages, planting uh, some poppies and yarrow, fall cold hardy things, as well as some perennials like the yarrow for next year, um, and pulling as many weeds as possible. I have not had the time or the back ability to do a lot of weed pulling yet because I injured my back something fierce coming back from my cruise. If you want to watch the cruise videos, they are going up Every Wednesday at 6 a.m. I have a video for every single port that mom and I did. Um, what we did, what excursions we did. We went to Pompeii, we went to Santorini, we walked up the Acropolis to the Parthenon. So go check out that playlist and if you want to come along on the adventure, hang out with us every Wednesday. It's going to be fun. I mean, it was the trip of a lifetime and we've been on a lot of trips. In the meantime, the garden has been left behind to struggle and it's still very very pretty and even when I look at the, the comparison of this year to last year even being neglected for a month um it looks great compared to where we were last year just because I put in so many more perennials as opposed to annuals that need more maintenance so we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna do a full garden tour just ignore the weeds because I'm still working on them like I said even though I've been putting in a lot of plants We'll see those videos coming out. You might have seen some already. Some might come out after this video. It's hard to say when everything's discombobulated from the trip. Um, my back hurting so bad has really put a hindrance on the weeding, especially because I've had to ask my mom for help planting some things. She can't both plant and weed. It's too much. So, you know, sometimes you just have to have a bit of grace. The trip of the lifetime is worth a few weeds. So we're not going to complain life is pretty darn good. We're going to go ahead and start over by the shed and I will walk you through which parts of the garden are alive, which are asleep, which are going to bed for the winter. And uh, let's just see. All right, y'all. So from the shed, this whole area, the shed area is still so much work in progress. That's okay. You can see of our raised beds, the cosmos, are going to town, some of our zinnias, our zinnia -ine, the uh, fruits and vegetables section, potato section, all of that is done for the season. So we're not gonna go down there because that is where the majority of the weeds are and there's nothing really to see. Honestly, I'm thinking about asking for gravel or compost for Christmas to finally finish off the ground in this area because it keeps just getting moved further and further down my priority list of budgeting. In the meantime, my little wall here is doing so good. My one pop star hydrangea going to sleep for the season, but you can see how much it's done. There is still new growth coming up with buds, even this late in the season. In our zone, of course, we don't have a real freeze or frost usually until about the mid middle of November. Now my rose is starting to put out rose hips because I haven't been able to deadhead it, but that's okay. Come clean her up. Oh, the sun and the helicopters. The Texas sage has grown quite a bit this year. It was about this high when I planted it. So hopefully next season, these will really start to shine, but it will probably not be till that third year that they really, really do. Oh, look, we still have, still have roses blooming. We'd have more if I had deadheaded these, but you know, you 
cannot be everything to everyone. And twist and shout, shout now, look at that. Look at that, beginning of November, we still have blooms. Now you will see, just did a video, we had a freeze two nights ago. Um, it got down under 30 degrees, which is really not heard of in our zone 8B. We're at the very bottom of Alabama, almost to the beach. Um, so that is very, very strange. And I came out with all my sheets and my blankets and my buckets, and I protected all of my hydrangeas, all my blooms, all my mums. You can check out that video. Um, and while a lot of people in the comments said, you know, I don't never seem to protect blooms from a freeze because we have such a long blooming period. If I had let these guys freeze, all of those buds, all of those blooms would be dead. And if this was the cold season, like we were going to have another freeze tomorrow, then you can't come out every night and cover a plant until Christmas time. They're still going to just go to sleep eventually. But we still have at least another month, 20 days minimum of bloom time. Like these will bloom and we will be able to enjoy them. So since there is no more freezes or frost on the forecast for at least 10 days, it's worth it to cover those blooms and uh, protect them against the freeze slash frost. So back to the garden. This portion of the garden has mainly gone to sleep. The white mums are still great. This purple one, we need to shear him back. The salvia needs sheared back. Like they're still green at the bottom where you can see they kind of needed to be sheared back probably during the month I was gone. If they had been, they might have had enough time to regrow and bloom for us one more time. Is what it is. We will shear those back for the season. They will not have enough time to rebloom now, but they'll come back for us next year. Our butterfly bush also needs deadheaded, but he is still green and he will come back next year. All the perennials like this, they just need sheared and left for next year. You can either shear them now in the fall or wait until the spring. That is up to you. Sometimes it is easier to leave them until spring so that they have more bulk to protect them against the cold. And sometimes it's better to cut them and shear them back, deadhead them, in the winter so you just are in the fall you need to just google each plant or check out some of the deadheading and uh, pruning videos i've done other youtubers have done and decide plant by plant is this a fall pruning plant or a spring pruning plant the balloon flowers are still great my cat mint this laura pedlum always excellent we have our butterfly garden over here and our tall bushes. I don't remember what those are called. We have weeds. I told you, pretend those aren't there because I'm going to have to weed this whole section again. But the butterfly garden is doing beautifully. It looks overgrown and I never did get something for the trellises. So that's frustrating, but oh well, is what it is. In the meantime, these bushes are doing great. I'm hoping they will fill in this whole area because I want to hide more of this mess. My rose bushes down here, the Peggy Martin, needs a lot of work to attach to the fence. And my milkweed is like glorious and huge. So, you know, things are working, even if not everything looks great. This is gonna be like a week or two of help, maybe. When I ask for uh, something to go on the ground here, I will also ask for help cleaning it. In the meantime, the Gara, what did I just do? I don't know. Ooh, look at all those weeds. The Gara is starting to rebloom. It often comes back and gives us blooms in the pretty, pretty fall months when it gets cooler. This lambs there is love in life. A lot of my lambs are really struggled this year. Uh, but the lambs here down here did better. My coneflowers have pretty much gone to sleep for the winter, and that's okay. Again, you can prune those now or in the spring, either one. A lot of the cones, um, if you'll leave those through the winter, birds really like them for food in areas where the birds will stick around. Now, my bee balm is a perennial. And while it has grown crazy this year, it still has not bloomed for us once. 
So I'm hoping that next season it blooms for us. The uh, Sweet Alyssum experiment has gone three ways. So this is the Sweet Night. I don't remember. I'll put it on the screen. This is the night version and it is the best. And the salvia behind it, excellent. Hopefully both of these will come back next year. On the other side of the garden, this is the alyssum I did from seed. And as you can see, it has gone pretty much belly up. It is not blooming. It is not green. It really could come out. I, I did take the second one out to replace it with this beautiful mum. And then we have the Snow Princess, which at my mom's house is glorious and which all of the reviews say should be the most glorious and it should come back next year. We'll see if it does. And if it does, I think I will be moving him to a sunnier spot because the, the ones in the sun did better. I thought they would do better in the shade in our zone because it's so sunny. The ones in the sun did better. The ones at mom's house, glorious. Little comb flowers. These are white comb flowers. And I have been growing them all season. Doesn't make any sense. Ooh, broke that right off. But look, like, they're still growing. So, it's almost time to redo the milk jugs for next year. We have our new yarrow. Mom just helped me plant and it is looking much better. It was looking wilted and dead. So fox gloves are just about done. Our lilies are definitely done. Once they turn brown and crispy like these lily stems, I will come and cut those back. But while I hate the way they look to just be like stems, anything that's a bulb, you want to wait until it goes brown and crispy so that you know it is collecting as much energy from the sun as possible to feed the blooms for next year. So you don't wanna just cut them back because they're unsightly. They need that sun to perform the best for next year, and especially things like lilies that are perennial, that will keep coming back, that will keep multiplying, that will get better every single year you leave them in the ground. Even if you have to separate them sometimes, you want them to get that sun, is what it is poppies we planted are putting up buds every single one of them has a bud so we will have blooms on these poppies this fall and then they will probably kind of stall for a little while they will come back again in the spring and be glorious at the front of this border our fox gloves we can probably cut those stalks down but you know you can only come out and cut so much stuff one at a time. It's usually easier just to come out and do it all at once. We did plant blue pansies all along here. Those will be pretty once they fill in, along with a ornamental cabbage and my favorite, a pink mum. Look how pretty that is. I think this guy must have been a little off kilter at the nursery because he's blooming half and half but that's okay I'm really hoping that getting this guy in the ground he will stick around mom's almost always come back in our zone so let's hope he comes back for many more years wouldn't that be nice we also have ranunculus corms planted all throughout here and look at this ranunculus 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 Ranunculus, Ran like almost all the corms we planted last year that bloomed for us last spring are coming back up to perform for us again this spring. And the earlier the corms come up and the leaves start collecting that sun, the earlier they will bloom. Last year they bloomed pretty late for us because I got them in the ground late. So since those were a success and are coming back, I think I'm going to put some more of those in the ground different places because most bulbs in our zone you have to dig up and preserve or they're like tulips are a one and done for us they will not come back in our zone they get too moist oh hate that word they get too wet they rot they just don't live so you know if the ranunculus is well a lot of zones up north 
they get too hot and so they have to be dug and stored. Down here, they, they're fine. So we're gonna keep putting those in. Look at our hydrangea. This is the bloomstruck. I think despite the sheet, its buds were got by the frost. So that's frustrating, but you can see how big she's getting and she is still producing buds for next year. So good enough. And then we did pansies, pansies, pansies. Whoops, just a second. Completely forgot that I had these mums were sitting on my porch. So I've been meaning to move to this spot. You can see that while they have buds, the first round of blooms is almost done. But this whole area is my foxglove spot, which means in the spring and the summer it is beautiful with foxgloves. But in the fall, there's not much there. It gets way too hot in this spot as opposed to down in the shade where the foxgloves will keep foxgloving. So instead of just letting it be a big hole, I decided this year I was going to put planters there. And I think that's the perfect solution to leaving it open for a foxglove and then not having it be a big dead spot. So purple mums are very pretty and the pink and purple yellow pansies in front will be a great change. We've got some ornamental kale and cabbage, a big one and a little one. So we can move these around depending on what needs space. We also see, we also see, we also have some ranunculus corms back here, but only like five, I think. And they follow this front curve because I had uh, cabbages planted here last year. Another one of our yarrows. This lamb's ear was the most glorious of all last year and this year it looks pitiful. Now there's still growth here and so I'm hoping next year it'll come back and maybe it's just on the struggle bus, I don't know. But what's not on the struggle bus is this lantana. So I put three here. Obviously that was super overkill. <laughs> two would have been a lot. We're going to move one of the, the third one, maybe somewhere that way next season. But you know, overkill or not, it is beautiful. And that was the whole goal. Almost everything I have planted here before could not take the heat and died in the sun and the heat of the summer. And the lantana only thrives and gets bigger. So we will ro re relocate one, maybe two of these next summer to give the rest of the plants some breathing space, but that is definitely a winner. I mean, the path edge is all the way back here. Like it's coming out quite a bit. So on the other hand, these mums, if I had been home in the middle of October, I could have cut off the first round of all the dead blooms before the second buds came out but they are reblooming, and I will take that even with the dead in there. I really, really hope these survive because last year, the two white ones that I had that are over that way, they were in these two pots. They survived. I planted them out in the spring and they're still thriving. So hopefully these will live. Maybe I can plant these, the purple one over there that I thought was white out somewhere next year. In the meantime, we have this hydrangea. Now our window boxes look really, really sad, but we're not going to worry about that. There's even a weed in one. This is our twist and shout hydrangea. And although she is going to sleep for the winter, there's still a few blooms on the end. Planted all our pansies here. We have our pentas that we literally put pillowcases over to preserve the blooms of during that frost. And obviously it worked put some pillowcases over this salvia as well as our little cabbage, the verbena. It's just about done for the year as well as the catmint and these vincas that came out from like three years ago. Our one foxglove that is still foxgloving with the one coneflower that is still coneflowering. This is one of the prettiest spots in the whole garden right now. Our roses need to be cut back. Oh, 
this Gumfrina I grew from seed and it looked glorious all season. Um, hopefully it will come back, but if not, I have more seed and I will be growing more of that because it was super easy. This Laura Pedalum needs trimmed back in the worst way, especially because there's a whole butterfly bush under there that is getting blocked from the sun, except for this one section. Ooh, pretty blooms. Rose and a lantana fighting for space. Maybe I'll move the lantana further in. I can uh, surround this whole guy because I literally in this area have had Supertunia bubblegums for the last two years and they are glorious when they are in full bloom, but they just do not like the heat of the summer and I have this big dead spot. So maybe, especially because the lantana gets so big, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have the big things on the side and the short things in the middle. So maybe I will move these further in or back. I don't know. I'm going to have to rethink this whole section next year because this is not working. But what is working, got some iris back here that are looking great. Butterfly bush, nice trash that uh, blew down into my yard. I must have had some ranch chips. They are delicious, but not in my garden. My salvia that I cut back hard, you can see is starting to rebloom. So if I cut back the other salvia, same time. Then we have some box gloves. All of these glads, the foliage is starting to be done. I'll pull those and they'll come up next year. My uh, hummingbird. I love this guy. I think he's beautiful and I love, he like really moves in the wind. And I love that you can see him from all the way down at the other end of the garden. He's tall enough to be seen over everything. And then we have impatience that are impatiently done. Cyclamen. Now look, some of these we just planted and they're going to struggle before they rebound. You can see all the new growth coming in. Some of these, pretty much all these leaves, I probably just need to come in and take off. I was hoping they'd be able to support them, but it's too much. So we'll come in and do that work. But all these tubers and the plants that I planted last season are coming in strong. Look at these blooms. Look at them. So we planted these along with the foxtail ferns all the way around the tree. We planted hot pink ones and the light purple. And so eventually this whole area will be just covered in these beautiful ivy leaves, the hot pink blooms, and the light purple blooms. And the best part is that they really, while you'll have the ivy leaves almost the whole year, the flowers are cold weather flowers. So you'll have a few over the spring and the summer, but they really go to town and are just glorious in the fall and winter. So a little bit of color down here. Then we have one, two, three peonies, which of course are done for the season but they come up behind and are glorious. So far we've only had foliage, but this is the third year for some of them, which means next year, hopefully we'll get at least a couple blooms. Um, glorious peonies in the spring, early summer, and then the cyclamen in the early fall and winter. Well, I would love, love, love to have flowers that just bloom spring, summer, winter, and fall. That is very, very rarely an option. So in that case, sometimes seasonal options are best. I have tried annuals down here. I've tried vinca. I've tried impatience. I've tried begonias. Um, the shade tree really provides a lot of shade. It also restricts a lot of the water, takes a lot of the water. So you have to have something that can handle shade and not a lot of water. And nothing else I've tried down here has worked. These cyclamen are working wonderfully and they're perennial, so you know win all around. I will link below the video where I planted them and the video last week where I updated you on them. I did an up close look on them and I planted that new six pack. So if you want to see that, check it out.
In the meantime, we're at the end of the garden. So Iris is down here, glad we've got a little hydrangea. This was supposed to be the same size, well it was, it's the same exact one. They were the same exact size when I planted them as the one down there where the blooms are dying off. It is a bloom struck. And this is just the difference in a hydrangea in the sun versus the shade. They were literally twins when I planted them. I planted last year, I think six foxtail ferns. I did not know to cover them with that hard, hard freeze summer or freeze we had last winter. So I lost three of the six. This year, I do want to plant at least maybe one, two, three more. We'll see. Um, but we'll see if we're going to do that now or next spring. I just want more interest down here because a lot of the things down here just can't bloom, just can't handle the shade. So if you can't have the flowers, evergreen is better than nevergreen. Last but not least, we have my Vitex, which has almost doubled, if not double and a half in size. This guy can get almost 25 tall and wide. And the whole goal is just to soften this side of the house and kind of disguise it because who wants to see this all the time? So grow, Vitex, go. I am very happy with how the garden is looking after almost a, a month and a half of neglect. We were gone for a long time. And even when you're not gone, it's not like you're out here gardening the week before you leave or the week you get back. So I think it's held up really well. As always, I would like to rethink parts, do things a little different next year. A lot of it is doing really well and I'm obviously not changing what's working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So the cyclamen are doing amazing. I cannot believe those ranunculus bulbs. Corms are already starting to come up. I'm hoping that means we're gonna have a great year for ranunculus next year. And I will see y'all in next month's garden tour for December. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere since, since I just got back. Um, <laughs> and we will see what is still making it in the middle of the winter. I'll see y'all then. Bye.